place on earth quite like it. Here, the astonishing is commonplace. Fish leap from the water to catch their prey, and cats swim. It is a realm both beautiful and brutal, where adaptation is the key to survival. This is the wild Amazon. The Amazon Basin, one of the world's greatest natural habitats. Home to one-tenth of all the plant and animal species on Earth. The world's largest rainforest is watered by the world's mightiest river, the Amazon. 6,000 kilometers long. This mysterious region is finally giving up its secrets. In the past 10 years, a new species has been discovered on average every three days. But the Amazon is changing fast, threatening the animals and plants that have evolved here for millions of years. The race is on to learn more about this remarkable place before it's too late. One of the Amazon's most elusive and mysterious creatures is also the biggest cat in the Americas. A male jaguar like this one can grow up to two meters long and weigh 160 kilos. His name, from an Indian word, means he who kills with one leap. And he lives up to that name. A jaguar usually kills with a single bite to the back of the head. His powerful jaws and three centimeter long canines can easily pierce the skull of his prey. Unlike many cats who avoid water, the jaguar is well adapted to swimming. He travels along the Amazon's intricate maze of waterways to reach his favorite hunting sites. But even the jaguar has to be cautious in these muddy waters. There are giant snakes, like anacondas, lurking here. And they've been known to kill jaguars. Back on dry land, he shifts instantly into hunting mode. He's equipped with keen eyesight and an acute sense of hearing. But stealth is another important weapon. For the animals sharing his habitat, he's a creature to fear. doesn't always get what he's after. He may be a top predator, but that doesn't make his life easy. Each jaguar's markings are unique, ideal camouflage in the dense jungle. But they've made these big cats a target for the fur trade. In the 1960s, more than 15,000 jaguars were killed for their pelts every year. Now, 
The trade is now banned, but the Jaguar is still threatened. These forests are a last refuge. The Amazon River Basin dominates the northern half of South America. An area over half the size of Australia, it's the green heart of a massive continent. And its forests are truly the lungs of the planet. But now, after millions of years of adaptation, the Amazon's wildlife is threatened as the forest around them changes. As the biggest land predator here, a jaguar needs as much as 300 square kilometers of forest to thrive. Scientists are eager to get a better estimate of the jaguar population to learn how they're faring. If they can determine what's happening to this top predator, they'll have a better understanding of the forest's interdependent web of life. If the jaguars are thriving, there must be plenty of prey which would be a sign that the habitat is healthy too. But first, the scientists must catch one. They think there are still some in this part of the jungle, but in four years have only caught three. Either the cats are simply too wary to be caught, or the population here is dangerously low. With traps set, the scientists can only wait and hope. Even in a tropical rainforest, there's a change of seasons. In December, storm clouds gather, heralding the start of the heavy rains. For one group of birds, it's their last chance to catch a female's eye before rain stops playing. The brilliant feathers of male band-tailed mannequin act like a beacon, signaling to any passing female to stop by and check him out. It's up to the female to decide who has the most dazzling feathers and the smoothest moves. Only the best and the brightest will win a chance to breed. For this young white-throated mannequin, color is less important than dance. And he's careful to keep his arena in perfect order. Even a single stray leaf can cost him points. It's quickly disposed of and with style. But, try as he might, he doesn't manage to impress this female. And he may not get another chance this season. There isn't much time. By the end of December, the rains have arrived with full force. In some areas, an incredible three meters will fall in just a few months. The creatures that live here must adapt or drown. Snow melt from the Andes and rain from the cloud forests send over 200 billion metric tons of water thundering down the valleys. Even the Amazon River, the largest freshwater reservoir on the planet, can't contain that much water. Every year it overflows its banks, growing in width by five times or more. And flooding an area about the size of the United Kingdom. Dawn breaks over a world transformed.
trees here have evolved to deal with this annual inundation. They can survive even standing in eight meters of water. The forest will stay flooded for up to seven months. For animals of the forest floor, it can spell disaster unless they can get away. The long-nosed armadillo lives on dry land and usually travels only at night. Forced from her flooded burrow, this female desperately swims for safety. She's in grave danger. Predators like the black caiman cruise the waterways, and she could sink under the weight of her heavy shell. She can hold her breath for a few minutes and even walk on the river bottom if she has to. To make it across this wide channel, she swallows air and inflates her stomach, creating a temporary life jacket. But swimming this far is exhausting. And hungry predators are on patrol. The floods have driven the armadillo out of her burrow and into the swollen river to swim for her life. This time, she's lucky. Below the surface, the flooded forest is a surreal landscape. A shadowy figure swims among the branches where birds once flew. It's a manatee, seeking food and shelter. The Amazonian manatee is the smallest of its species, and the only one in the world that lives exclusively in fresh water. An incredibly slow metabolic rate allows it to stay underwater for up to 20 minutes before it has to surface for air. This female has migrated from the river into the flooded forest. Floating grasses and water hyacinth flourish at this time and she gorges on the newly available vegetation. She can eat up to 15% of her body weight per day. Plenty of plant matter helps her produce plenty of milk for her baby. It will take almost a year for the calf to be fully weaned, and the young manatee may stay with its mother for another year beyond that, sheltering in her shadow and learning how to survive. Even in this lush environment, competition for food can be fierce. Survivors have evolved ways to find food where their rivals fail. One fish has come up with an extraordinary solution. It's the silver arowana. Local people call it the water monkey. It hunts out of the water as well as below it. Loitering in shallow pools close to trees, it stays near the surface and keeps an eye out for any movement above.
Once it spots a target, the arowana launches itself out of the water and into the air. It can leap more than two meters above the surface. Gaining a crucial edge in the race for food. These waters are teeming with fish, which attract plenty of fish hunters. The Amazon is the last stronghold for the endangered giant otters, which can grow to almost two meters. They live and hunt in large social groups. This group of ten is an extended family, headed up by mum and dad. The pack is a welcome sight to the native Kayapo Indians who live downriver. Like the fish they eat, giant otters can only thrive in clean and healthy rivers. As the planet's greatest waterway becomes more polluted, their survival is threatened. People and otters share this stretch of river with a small fish with a bad reputation. The red piranha. Piranha have a mouthful of razor-sharp teeth, and when they're whipped into a feeding frenzy, they can rip their prey apart in seconds. An injured fish, discarded by the otters, becomes a convenient victim. Sound and movement attract their attention, but blood is the real lure. The Kayapo know it's safe for them to swim here. Despite the rumors, piranha have little interest in humans. Living deep in the heart of the Amazon jungle, the Kayapo were once a powerful nation. Today, these villagers are some of the few thousand that remain, living in scattered settlements along the riverbank. They see themselves as part of the forest, like the creatures with whom they share it. They depend on the generosity of the river and forest, but they're careful to take no more than they need. At this season, the flooded rivers offer the only route into the dense jungle. Today, Two village elders are hunting a creature they prize, and they found it. The long-nosed armadillo. They believe that the forest's plants and animals share a universal energy, which must be kept in balance. understand that they should respect all of the forest's inhabitants and be grateful for its gifts. So, as the elders head home with their prize, they sing to the armadillo's spirit, giving thanks for helping the tribe to survive at least one more day. The beauty and bounty of the Amazon often mask hidden dangers. And dark secrets. Plants are armed with spikes and laced with poisons. And so are many animals.
These forests are no Garden of Eden, but a battlefield of survival, and the inhabitants have had to adapt to its dangers. The bright markings of the wackery dart frog mean only one thing. Keep away. Chemicals in its skin make it bitter and unpleasant to eat. That might explain why the female can risk laying only a few eggs and on a very exposed leaf. Over time, the eggs develop into tadpoles and start to move. And that makes these young ones even more vulnerable. Movement can alert predators. So their father stands guard during his offspring's first weeks of life. Predators have learned that the frog's markings mean an unpleasant supper. Its tadpoles may taste bad too. But they don't. Not yet. Their survival now depends on his protection and on one last task that'll help secure their future. He'll take them on a bold and dangerous journey to a higher and safer place. First, the babies have to climb onto his back. A thin film of mucus will hold them in place as they take the ride of their lives. Pools of rainwater captured by bromeliad plants provide a secure hiding place for the developing tadpoles. This will be the father's last gift to his young. It's only now that he will finally leave them. The pools provide a safe haven and the nutrient-rich water will sustain the young tadpole for the next three months. Then the small frog will acquire its own personal toxic defence and the cycle will begin again. This hothouse of biodiversity is slowly giving up its secrets. It is April. After nearly five months, the heavy rains have subsided. And sunny days are more frequent now. The stage is set for an extraordinary event. One of the most unusual partnerships in the Amazon. Flooded lagoons on the fringes of the rainforest offer an ideal home for a floating giant. The Amazonian giant water lily is truly a colossus. It has the second largest single leaf of any plant in the world. It grows amazingly fast, up to 25 centimeters every day and it's strong enough to support as much as 60 kilos. This two-meter-long caiman uses it to lounge in the sun. And the leaves form a perfect fishing platform for a green heron. But it's not just its size that makes this plant remarkable, it's how it reproduces. The different coloured flowers are the clue. As night falls, the white flower's internal temperature rises, up to 10 degrees warmer than the surrounding air. That prompts the flower to open. 
The white flower is female and can't produce pollen. But it does produce a strong, sweet, pineapple-like scent. That aroma attracts a tiny scarab beetle, just two centimeters long. It's one of the lily's main pollinators. It climbs into the heart of the female flower, carrying a dusting of pollen picked up from male lily flowers. As dawn approaches, the flower cools and closes. Any beetles still inside are now trapped. But that's no problem. They're safe from heat and danger. And even better, they get to spend all day feasting on starchy nectar. As the beetle eats, its load of pollen drops off, falling onto the flower's reproductive parts. There, it triggers a magical transformation. The white flower blushes pink and turns from female to male, so that it can now produce its own pollen. When night falls again, the flower opens and the beetle, now carrying the newly male flower's pollen, escapes to search for another sweetly scented white female lily. Pollination complete, the pink male flower will die back to a seed and sink to the bottom of the pool. Its fertilized seed will germinate and mature to repeat the water lily's magical transformation next year. The Amazon is a living laboratory where nature has been experimenting for millions of years. But habitat destruction is undoing nature's handiwork putting many species here at risk. Knowing the condition of top predators is a good way to gauge the health of the forest. That's why scientists have been trying to track and study jaguars here for four years. But so far they have only managed to catch three. That's not enough for their research. So they've come up with a creative solution. They're using some unlikely technology. An MP3 player and speakers broadcast a Jaguar call into the jungle. Hopefully, an inquisitive cat would investigate. It's a long shot, but the scientists are running out of options and the jaguars are running out of time. Many creatures flourish here. There are over a thousand species of frogs and more than 1,500 kinds of birds. The most successful of all are the insects. A single square kilometer may contain 30,000 species. None are more prolific than the ants. They've changed little since the time of the dinosaurs. And today they make up over 30% of the total weight of animals in the Amazon. They exploit all parts of the forest. Under the forest floor, up in the treetops, and everywhere in between. Ants consume more vegetation in the Amazon than any other creature. And the Cecropia tree is vulnerable to attack. Unlike many trees in the Amazon, its leaves aren't poisonous. But neither is it defenseless. The Cecropia has evolved a survival strategy that welcomes an ant. Though the relationship doesn't seem to start well. The Queen Azteca ant bores a hole in a soft area of the tree's branch. She quickly gets to work colonizing hollow chambers inside the stems. Perfect for raising an entire army of ants. The workers tend to the queen 
as she lays her precious eggs. So why does the tree tolerate these alien invaders? That becomes clear when a hungry beetle makes its way to the tree's leaves. Movement on the stems alerts the ants. The workers mobilize and immediately respond. They track down their target and attack. The ants have a ferocious bite and grab the soft parts of the beetle. The beetle is soon covered with ants. Fighting for its life against an army that's defending its home turf. For the beetle, a hasty retreat is the only option. The rainforest's upper canopy can reach up to 50 meters above the forest floor. So inaccessible that many of its creatures remain a mystery. When scientists get their chance to explore it, they often find something new. Just in the last decade, nine new primates have been discovered. The canopy's wide range of habitats can accommodate a wide variety of primates. Tiny tamarinds, the size of a coconut, live alongside eight kilo howler monkeys. One of the most bizarre looking is the red wakari that shares its name with the poison frog. Local people call it the English monkey because its red face looks like a pale-skinned foreigner who's been in the sun for too long. In fact, that red face serves an important purpose. The brighter the colour, the healthier the animal. That's a vital sign to look for in selecting a mate. When trees are in fruit, Wakali spend most of their time foraging in the upper canopy. They use their amazingly strong lower jaws to open the tough skins of unripe fruits and nuts, which other primates have to abandon. Their small tails are unique among Amazon monkeys. But that shortcoming doesn't stop them travelling through the trees with ease. Family members groom each other to strengthen bonds and to establish a pecking order. Their social hierarchy is crucial for keeping the troop together. Juvenile males forge their own relationships through play and mock fights. Sometimes it's hard to tell which is which. Their antics serve another purpose helping young monkeys develop the skills they'll need to survive in the canopy. The dry season is approaching and the troop must take advantage of the last remaining fruits of the flood.
The careless fumble provides a treat to the tambaki fish lurking in the shallows below. The lush green world of the canopy is not without dangers. The squirrel monkey spots a harpy eagle and sounds the alarm, alerting everything in earshot. The giant harpy eagle is well adapted to life in the thick canopy. and it's fully capable of plucking a monkey right off a branch. A determined male with a chick to feed poses a special threat. Ranging far and wide to find food, its nest is over three kilometers away at the top of a giant tree. The kumaru tree can grow up to a height of 50 meters. Local people prize its bark and seeds as medicine using it to treat everything from snake bite to earache. The female harpy eagle and her chick nest safely in its crown. She is truly a giant, the largest raptor in the Americas, with a wingspan of up to two meters. Her talons are as large as a grizzly bear's, capable of grabbing prey that weighs half as much as she does. In spite of her size and strength, her chick is at risk from many enemies, including disease-carrying flies. Like the native tribes, it seems the mother understands something about the health benefits of plants. She frequently brings fresh green twigs and branches to freshen the nest. And her efforts seem to keep parasites and insects away from her precious chick. There are other threats for which she has no defense. The valuable hardwood of the Kumaru tree is sought out by loggers. Man may not be king of this jungle, but with a chainsaw in his hand, he can rule supreme. of the Amazon rainforest has already been cleared, threatening not only the harpy eagle, but all life on Earth. The forest is a vast storehouse of carbon, and its destruction releases massive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 
that contributes to global climate change. As the trees disappear, the worldwide threat grows. And wildlife in the Amazon is in peril. Forest loss presents a special danger for the threatened harpy eagle. This is the mother's third attempt at nest building and the third tree she has selected. The previous two have been cut down. It takes harpy eagles a year to raise a single chick. Will this one grow to adulthood? The foresters are only a kilometer away. As the season shifts from wet to dry, water levels are dropping. The receding floodwaters will allow jaguars to expand their hunting grounds. And that could give the scientists a better chance of locating and capturing their quarry. They are eager to learn more about the big cat's behavior and to assess the overall health of this part of the Amazon. The speakers are already broadcasting Jaguar calls. Maybe this simple technology will make the difference. They don't have long to wait. They've captured a young female in her prime. She'll soon be ready to breed. And her success will be a real test of the health of the environment. They need to sedate her quickly and safely. This is the most dangerous part of the project for both the scientists and the animal. drugs work fast. Now they can gather the information they need. A radio collar and GPS tracking tag will allow the scientists to follow the Jaguar's movements through the forest. This research will provide clues to her behavior during the dry season to come. And that will help the scientists understand more clearly how she survives in her secret domain. The insights they gain could help secure the future of the forest itself. The Amazon is filled with questions waiting to be answered. Mysteries to be solved. Ceaseless change is at its heart. With the end of the floods, the forest re-emerges. Birds return to branches that sheltered fish. Amazing stories of adaptation have been the key to survival here for millions of years. But as the world changes, can the Amazon endure?